embarrassed that he has uh, petered out here and petered out at the end of the last segment specifically where he was confused by both the clock and the last 36 hours of what have been a very draining experience for the entirety of our show. David Sampson has now produced a top five list with some preparation Hmm. to combat what I am saying that I'm willing to nominate Kim Mulkey and put her second on most villainous people in sports, and I'm making the qualifier of uh, a person who embraces that role of villainy. Not just that they're disliked, but they're disliked and they seem to purposely do a bunch of trolling things. This changes your list. They do trolling things to embrace the, the professional wrestling heel character. We'll get to David's list in a second, but I want to reveal to the shipping container the conversation <laughs> that I was just having uh, in here with David and uh, and with Stugatz and the illumination that came to me, I'm going to say about 90 seconds too late in what was an argument with David and Stugatz. Uh, Matthew Coca came in, uh, the excellent producer for Nothing Personal. I will again tell the audience, as I do almost every time David's around us, that Nothing Personal is covering different ground than just about anyone in sports. And you should check it out every morning, weekdays, DraftKing uh, Network and the, our YouTube channel. Uh, but before... I get to villains and what Coca said because um, Coca, Coca was surprised by how tall I am, and I get this a lot um, because people there's something about television that sitting next to my father or whatever it is that was happening that people think that I'm smaller than six feet tall, and so what I get a lot is you're taller than that. And Samson was saying I get a lot. People say to me you're a lot shorter than I thought you were. People aren't going to say they're taller than he thought they were. Uh, that is correct. They're not going to probably say that to David Sampson. But <laughs> Sampson, is, I'm surprised they're saying out loud to him, you're a lot shorter than I thought because it feels like you're leading with an insult there. I don't take you're taller than I thought as an insult. It's a compliment? Well, it's not necessarily a compliment. It makes you but feel good, though. I'm not, I mean, it's, it, it, it's just, it's not negative. I'm not going to say. That's how I feel about when people say you're shorter than I thought you were. I don't but that's, that is negative. That feels to me like it can be insulting if you're insecure about your height. And so both Stugatz and Samson were saying to me, that's not insulting. And it took me about 90 seconds to realize that I'm dealing with two very confident short people. <laughs> I wasn't, short kings. I wasn't even. There aren't many out there. I, I mean. wasn't. I wasn't realizing as it was happening. Like I'm. Like I'm pretty sure that short is considered more <laughs> negative than tall when talking about people. But I wasn't in the company that I was keeping being met that way. Both of them seemed confused by what I was saying, and both of them were telling me that I was wrong. Well, I think the comment can be spun as a positive for them, right? Like, So if you're viewing short as like a negative, they're saying, like, well, you give off all of this confidence of someone who is not the height that you are, right? Like. I'll have the same thing happen to me sometimes when we have like show events or whatever. They're like, oh, you're a lot taller than I thought. And I'm like, well, what, what is that supposed to mean? Like, oh, so you don't take that as an automatic compliment? <laughs> uh, well, I take it as just like a comment, right? Like I don't really understand what it adds, I guess. And it's not insulting to the like, people that say it. It's just like, what is, I don't know what to do with that information. It's like, well, do I give off not someone who is very confident and strapping, you know, someone with swagger that's very tall? Because that's how I take it, is they don't think that that's who I so am. So people in show business are generally shorter than you think. And that's why I'm used to... Tom uh, Cruise. Very short. Yes. So I have Poor no, men, I, honestly. You guys just have so much to worry yeah, about and think that's about. That's exactly what this is. It's hard is. being a man, yeah. No, but what Dan is saying is me I'm and David... I'm a little sincere. Me and David don't worry about anything. <laughs> well, put it on the poll at Lebetard Show, please, Juju. At Lebetard Show, uh, is you're shorter than I thought you were an insult? Yes or no? I do think this actually genuinely does stem back to toxic masculinity and the patriarchy, in that giving off confidence implicitly makes people believe you're taller, where where giving off a bit of um, careful. Giving off a bit of meekness, sincerity, <laughs> um, comfort in so emotions <laughs> might give off more of an average height. Um, you guys have to obsess over your heights. 
your wee wee size. Your chin. Ugh. It's awful. Yeah. God, must suck. I don't obsess over any of that stuff, actually. Same. Mm -hmm. What do you obsess over? Sure. I obsess over cleanliness, over timeliness. A giant over statue in left field would have said differently, David. <laughs> Those things. As drive a very me crazy. emotionally adjusted man, I think we should all follow your lead. Billy, do you think good. that it's uh, when you say what is what does that person mean by that when yeah. they think you're taller than you are? Are you doing it from the place of that could be insulting if this person is thinking that I'm too meek to be this tall? Yeah. It, they, they, you think they're looking at you as someone. So you're taking you're taller than I thought you were as kind of insulting if they're looking at you and saying you you give off a, the confidence of a shorter person. Well, I mean, the, the majority of people think that I'm this weak idiot. So when they see me in person, they're like, oh, hello, you're a human. So people assume tall means smart. No, they still Confident. think I'm an idiot. Yeah, no, they still think I'm an idiot. <laughs> Meet Gil. I uh, I'm I'm feeling the fallout from we saying we did that earlier, already. We yeah. did that three weeks ago. Oh, we already I brought did it back. The, we already <laughs> did the Meek Gill joke. That was a celebration, as though it was a new joke. Oh, was he great. thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm feeling the fallout because uh, the podcast has now come out of saying earlier that my daughters are idiots, and I didn't I didn't think anyone would hear that. Ooh. We can't all have daughters that win the Metal Arc Lifetime Achievement Oscar Award like my daughter Willow did last yeah. night. By the way, speaking of little guys, look at this little guy. He's so cute. To give the context so to cute. Billy, uh, he he I was uh, he loves his daughters, obviously. <laughs> but Thank, it's, you. He's Thank you, Dan. Two month old, <laughs> and, it. two month old, and an eight month old don't have a whole lot yeah, of intellect going on. Well, this is what he was. This, well, two this, years this, and eight months. Yeah, but, uh, I'm same sorry. thing. The, there, there was well, but earlier, um, forgive me, because I thought we said two months and eight months. I know you're it's okay. older than that. But it doesn't uh, make a lot of sense if you think about <laughs> it. Mathematically, uh, but I, well, but I, it's almost it impossible. It if Woody were here, he or... would explain why. <laughs> but I think it is more dangerous. I was doing, I had not actually done the tabulations and the math and the numbers in my head to actually think, wait a minute, his <laughs> daughter is older than two months old. But I was doing Two months old and eight months old, those are not smart human They can't beings. even drive. What can they do? They can't write their names. They can't do anything. Two year old, <laughs> to call a two-year-old an idiot is aggressive. I think people would be less mad at, at, at calling a two-year-old, uh, less a two-month-old an idiot than a two-year-old. <laughs> Lighten up, people. Gosh. What's happened? We've come a long way as a country. You can't even call two-year-olds idiots anymore. Jeez. It's your two-year-old. They can't even drive. That's, That's what I just said. I think people's issue is that they're your children. Yeah. Not that they've never seen an idiotic two-year-old. Well, it's that they sh you shouldn't describe your own. That's the only kind. The issue is it's my father and it's his granddaughters. That was the main issue. And he oh, said, don't call so my granddaughters idiots. listen to this podcast? Yeah. yeah. He said, don't do that ever again. They were so smart, we let them vote. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. If two-year-olds were so smart, would we let them vote? Do you imagine if that's what the election came down to? Kind of feels like it's going to anyways. No, it kind of feels like that's so what we're doing anyways. Is it not what it's going to come down to? It would just to? add to the number of people who don't vote. Uh, what is your top five list look like, and what have you crossed off your list? What are the corrections you've made? What is the I list? crossed Derek Jeter off. A villain? Derek Jeter's not a villain. Oh, oh. He is to he, David. He, he, but he's not, no, no. That's not a villain. You said that you need someone who views themselves as such. He took that your bathroom. That was the criteria. <laughs> Derek Jeter is not a villain under any circumstances. If we were to throw it Ask to the Boston. audience, uh, yeah, the yeah. audience, not even Boston. Oh, no, come on. No. Number five. Uh, wait a minute. You th put it on the poll at Lebitard Show. Does Boston think Derek Jeter is a villain? <laughs> like I, I feel like I'm talking to two two year olds. It's completely like, insane. Like, to, like do, this is not, do you guys not know what villainy is? Like what are you talking Maybe not. about? Yeah, me and David don't know what a villain is. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you think that <laughs> there are only a hundred names I could give you that Boston would think of as more like Derek Jeter prided himself on not being in any circumstances That's the thought joke of it. by anyone a villain. Well, so did A-Rod, but... Well, uh, wait, are you, do you have a Real camera villain. over my shoulder? A-Rod's on your list, too? You're not... Ca Hold on. We are going to have a lot of disagreements about this list. A-Rod cares deeply how people receive him. A villain does not. I think villains are largely insecure. For We're sure. We're going to really get to the bottom of it. A-Rod right? is one of the most insecure people you will ever meet. 
A Rod is considered a villain around sports, around business, around so. But you can't want to be liked and be a villain. You can't crave being liked and accept your role as a villain. That's he, he's talking about your willingness to be a villain and sink in to being a villain. But do you think that's where I am then? Do you think that's where I live in that universe? You're okay that with you... it. You're fine with it. You're more fine with it than either A-Rod and Jeter are. You're more fine with negative public relations than either of those human beings are. Yes. How about Bill Belichick? He doesn't care one way or the other how he oh, proceeds. So he can't even but be on he the doesn't list. do things that are actively what Mulkey is doing. Like Mulkey is looking for confrontation. She's lo- Mulkey almost seeks being booed. David Charles Oakley was a villain. You like the Knicks? That guy was a villain and sunk into being a villain. He did. But not with his speech, maybe with his play, but not with his play. Yeah. Not with his person. Patrick Mahomes. No. Okay, now I have to disagree. I don't understand with you. what this just, list but just, is. But just give us your list. I I mean, no, I don't have a list anymore. There's, Skip that Bayless. Was, that That's, was your list? Right. Jim Harbaugh. Arms. All right, I'll agree with you. I'll agree with you there. Okay. What happened? Happened? Mahomes. Mahomes. He just had a quote during the playoffs I love being the villain. I love when people want to come at me. He's not a villain. Patrick Mahomes is one of the most universally beloved athletes there are in America. L. Ron Hubbard. (laughs) Good one, actually. Does that not count? L. Ron Hubbard. I mean, he's right. uh, I have a different uh, understanding. uh, uh, I need more time. Look, so listen, bad at this. All right, David, I'm going to kick take the L, I'm going to kick David out for the rest of the show. Wow. He, he is spent. He's got nothing left in the tank. He's delirious. He's demented. People the hate amount, the, 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 I I understand I understand that they He's not in sports. They, but it's not, not in sports. Like I, I was asking you about in sport next to Kim Mulkey. Like I like L run Hubbard. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Dianetics. Get out! I'm gonna throw a theory at the room here on what just happened to David Sampson. I have kicked him out permanently. Uh, really? For the day. Oh, okay. I guess that's not permanent. No, but it's for, just the for the day, day. Right. it's permanent today anyway. And I've kicked him out because I really do believe Stugatz that he has lapsed into delirium because of what the last few days have been like. He did a morning show by himself today after doing seven hours yesterday. And I'm guessing most of the people listening to this who have real and arduous jobs do not understand why it is, for example, that Howard Stern has a show that he does three hours a day and then gets like three or four months of vacation, but he's working just three or four hours a day. How can that possibly be that tiring? And yet, when you look all over the entertainment landscape, whether it's column writing 30 years ago and they asked you to write four columns a week, or the way they ask you to do shows now, which is do a show for an hour a day or three hours a day, but it's just that. My guess is that most people listening to that don't think it's tiring, don't think it's taxing, don't think it's anything other than totally silly, and no one should get tired from that. As (laughs) Travis Kelsey says, podcasting is the hardest job in the world, which seems just ridiculous. He plays football. (laughs) <laughs> when he said that, I'm like, what are you talking about? He's right. You he can is. do this as well as we can do it. Imagine us trying to do that as well as you do it. Like, what in God's name are you talking about? But I do believe what's happened to David Sampson is he, because he's a total stamina weirdo, to God. Yep. Seven continents in seven days running seven marathons. Mm-hmm. That's not. Your pain threshold is through the roof when you can do that. Your need for rest is through the roof when you can do something like that. Yes. You, just and doing that was easier than what he did the last thirty six hours. Uh, well, I don't know if it's. I don't. I would not say that, but I would say that his judgment was better at the end of that than it was in that last segment because it couldn't have been worse than it was in that last segment. L. Ron Hubbard. I mean, it, he's not even doing. He's not even speaking the same language that we are. L. Ron Hubbard. It, uh, 
it doesn't make any sense to me. What you, that was after time for prep. And I want to remind you what the segment before that ended, like where he got confused by the clock, and then he says, I object, and I'm like, on what grounds? And he's like, I've got nothing else here. In David's defense, uh, you know, you started taking away all of his villains. He was naming all these people yeah. he thought were villains, and then you're like, no, that guy's not they a villain. That's not a villain. villain. Yeah. Well, they were terrible villains. Yeah. That's not. I'm not defending that. that they were terrible list. villains. That was the list that came with preparation. It did. He could give me nothing. In I don't know why to. I tried to give in David's defense. I never do that. I'm sorry. Out you of character for me. Receding him up. back. Yeah. Penalty box for you. Just a yes and. You know, <laughs> one of those. Because he's so good at that. That kind of thing. But Just it seems like Dan is defending him as well. Because he's saying not that. Seem like I'm not. That. I'm not you I cannot, you're saying it's very difficult to do this. Like you get, I, if you do it for 36 uh, consecutive hours, Dan, you're going to start to get hazy. You're going to start to have poor judgment. And I'm that's what not, happened to David. I am not well, defending. I am. What happened with David Sampson? I am explaining <laughs> how nonsense gibberish someone I keep telling is very good at this. How much nonsense gibberish he produced that didn't make any sense. I'm trying to explain it because what he gave me the last couple of segments was an uncommon kind of useless. And so that's that's I'm I'm trying to understand it because we're paying for this time and right. we have run him into the ground the last couple of days because what they did yesterday, seven straight hours. The reason Chris Cody and Mike are not around today and other people and Roy are not around today. I don't know how you, Jessica, I don't know how you got stuck with having to do this with me. The reason they're not around is laziness, Dan. No, we showed up here. No, this was scheduled this way to give them. What, what do you mean? Whoa, that's a peek behind the curtain. You're not supposed to give Dan Levitard. Listen, <laughs> I, I love Chris Cody. I did a Sunday night watch along, Sunday night football. Billy did it as well. We were here at 8 a.m. sharp, ready to go. I mean, I wasn't sharp, but sharp? I was here was at not 8 sharp. <laughs> you, were, you were here and not sharp, as I recall. I know what you guys feel like and look like on Mondays after you've done God Bless Football. Take back the sharp, sharp and you need to take back the sharp. But I was here, man. I was told I'm sitting in this chair today because Chris had to do Adnan's recap. And then Adnan was here today. The plot thickens. Which was odd. Just like the tushy on this little mini Oscar. Look at this guy. He's got Caked quite up. a little, his butt cheeks are. Jessica, why do you nice. keep waving that thing around as if it's supposed to mean something to anybody? It's a here? Lifetime Achievement that is a Award. Big award Dan. It's nice. I also I need to Shorter check I the score <laughs> on the um, can you beat David and Adnan game because I think I might have beaten them. I was um, I was nine for nine at one point wow, last really? night. I was yeah. knocking my picks out of the park. I need to go back and check that. But then because, you stopped knocking them out of. The well, then park. I went home. Yeah. And then I fell asleep, <laughs> and now I need to go back. Yeah. But I don't know. Someone but, on the video team, tell me if I won. Last night there the were uh, many. There were more than almost six thousand people were in this contest. Oh, I meant to ask David before he left what the prize was. He doesn't remember. His, his memorabilia is really good, though. People would want what he's oh, giving Josh away. Oh, an autographed baseball yeah. or something. Yeah. Well, the problem with what he was doing is he wouldn't say what it was, and I wasn't clear on why it is he wouldn't tell people what it is that they were playing for from his memorabilia collection because there's a lot of stuff in there that is super valuable. And uh, only three people um, – uh, let me see if I have these numbers right. Uh, only three people did uh, – got everything right? Were there No, nobody got everything right, but three people got all but one thing right, and only 49 people out of nearly 6,000 did as well as David Sampson correctly predicting this uh, stuff. So I, I'm not going to claim nefarious accounting. Uh, I wouldn't make that claim. It seems uh, it seems like he got a ton right. and that Certainly he's, not of David Sampson. Well, he's, he's good. <laughs> What's funny is that you can accuse him usually of nefarious accounting, but in this instance i believe he created this entire contest because he knows how good he is at it and he often gets these things right uh i wanted to ask you something though about the the viral video this weekend stugatz of uh lebron at the end of his career the oldest player in basketball being fawned over by ownership. I will remind people again, as I often do with the Lakers, they think of the Lakers as a big brand. It's a family brand. The Lakers are, are a family business in a way that very rarely in professional sports does the owner of your team 
not have other giant interests that make tons of money. Right. So Jeannie Buss has to be wildly grateful to LeBron James for making the post-Kobe years economically friendly because he's LeBron James and because she has him in a salary-capped uh, league at, uh, at an underpaid price because of the economy he brings with him. And the reason I want to bring it up uh, is only because of this. I saw a video over the weekend of a guy just watching 90s basketball, and it was Michael Jordan against Patrick Ewing. And as you watched it, it all ages very poorly, and it all looks like garbage. Except like, for Michael. No, course, everything. Right? Stop it. No, everything looks bad. But this person kept calling Patrick Ewing again and again trash because it's bad basketball compared to what it is that you're used to watching today. But I was juxtaposing that and the ending for Michael Jordan of his career, because I remember this clearly. Abe Poland was a shitty owner, but he got the last of Michael Jordan with the Wizards, and at the end of his basketball career, Michael Jordan was an employee and a disgraced one, leaving the building with no power. And I'm putting that next to what LeBron James has done over the last 15 years so that he can be in this position at the end of his career where he's going to segue from whatever he's doing here and he wants another three-year contract that's going to be in the $100 million range He'll as get the it. oldest player in the league. Mm -hmm. But he's not going to go out the way Michael Jordan did at the end, because I remember feeling offended on behalf of Michael Jordan that the Washington Wizards had mismanaged everything so poorly over the previous 20 years that they made him feel like an employee at the end of everything he had done for basketball. Right. And this is what I'm watching when I watch this video with LeBron James being fawned over by the owner of the Lakers, like felt up, touched by by the women around him in a way that feels like just um, hugely affectionate, it feels different to me than how Michael Jordan's career ended. And you understand how LeBron has changed so much of what that sport is and what people like him have in terms of power so that it could look like that at the end? Because I'm, what age? Can you look it up? I, I'm pretty sure it's at whatever age LeBron is now that Michael Jordan had to suffer the, the indignity, Stugatz. The indignity. Right. When you're Michael Jordan. Of playing for the Wizards? Not, no, not even <laughs> of playing for the Wizards. Of being rejected at the end by the Wizards and being told that he has no actual power and just sort of run out of the building without options, without GM control, without any control over what happened to him at the end. I, I would just say to you, I know many people in our audience are f plenty fed up with me talking about player empowerment, but when I tell you a place that LeBron James, you will get no argument from anybody, will be better than Michael Jordan, is on the ending. He'll, he'll get the ending better than Michael Jordan got the ending. Well, Michael had several different endings, so he, got, he nailed the Bulls ending. I mean, he did. No, you got one end. I mean, he pushed one. off yes. on Byron Russell. The he hit a jumper. He won his sixth title. That's the second ending. Yeah. <laughs> That's the second ending. That's right. not he messed the up the first ending. Well, if LeBron yeah. screws up his first one, then he exactly. we can offer him a yeah. couple more, right? <laughs> yes. Tom Brady messed up his first ending, didn't he? Yeah. I think yeah, you did. only get one ending. I think you... Ma. No. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not how it works. <laughs> okay, I appreciate this argument. I think we should do that show where nah. it's an argument show where I say a thing and you guys just make that sound. But I, I think you only get one ending. I mean, by definition... On his Wikipedia page, it says the final retirement. Yeah, but he, he got multiple endings. Th th there's one, end, one uh. actual ending to your playing career. The right. other two didn't end up being endings. They were endings. <laughs> at the time. Interesting that the last though. dance wasn't the ending. <laughs> it's his ending, though. Yeah, but it's his last dance. But he chose it. The last dance was also not about right, his not last dance. Yes, he got a lot of final things, and a lot of lasts, and a lot of uh, endings that weren't the actual ending. I feel like he's got a couple more in him. Not one, not two. He... Uh, he took I, I didn't realize this because I'm trying to find his age when he took over the he, Wizards. He was thirty eight. He took like two years off though before he went back, right? Oh yeah. He was thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, he didn't play. 
then came back at, at 38, 38 and played till 40 and and played 38 and 39 i guess he might have turned 40 um that season but what's crazy he, he averaged played, 42 a game he played all 82 games he came off the bench for several of those michael jordan coming off the bench well, that's what they LeBron do. will never come off the bench. No, he's going to stick the landing. LeBron will never come off the bench. He's going to stick the landing with his son. I believe, Stugatz, that you'll be offended by this, but Jeremy, as a child, saw Michael Jordan play for the Wizards Ooh. and, as a child, left the arena saying, that's a bad basketball player. <laughs> that's I unfair. Did. That's well, unfair. Well, <laughs> bad basketball player, it, I was underwhelmed in that I was eight years old and everyone in the world had told me Michael Jordan's the greatest basketball player you ever have seen, ever right. will see, all of that. Yep. And I showed up to the game and he was something like, you know, nine for forty. Right. Well, you were an eight-year-old. What the hell do you know? You and, he was idiot. Four, and he was and he was forty. He was forty years old. <laughs> right. Look, it just wasn't the Michael Jordan I was anticipating seeing. Jeremy, Disappointing. Jeremy was charting efficiencies as an yeah, eight-year-old. You know me. It's like thirteen for thirty. Jeremy's <laughs> never charted efficiency. Jeremy was oh. doing the halftime performance. Actually, I did sing the national anthem when I was eight years old at a Heat game. Shut up! Not that alone. is the least surprising thing. I've I was ever part heard. of the university school sensations. Uh, oh my oh. God! The sun. What is the sensations? We were the suns. So instead of sensations, we were the sensations. No, I get the wordplay, but what was it? It was like a little singing group for, <laughs> for all the little for future little gleeks. Babies? Yeah, for dumb little babies. Oh, future gleeks. Yep. Did you? Uh, speaking of age, I don't know if you guys know this, but Stefan Diggs is the oldest member of the Bills offense at 30 years old. <laughs> Stefan Diggs. Uh, that is a young offense, an unusually young offense. And when it comes to keeping these parts together, Stugatz, I don't know what's been reported most recently. I was a bit surprised when the Kansas City Chiefs, when I read uh, in general, and this is the finances of the sport, I told you last year that even although they have McDuffie, that I haven't seen a whole lot of people play corner better than LeJarrius Sneed played it for the Chiefs last year. And there have been conflicting reports on whether or not uh, what it'll take to get him is a second round pick or a first round pick, but he's available. And because of the con because of the finances of stuff, we were talking earlier in the show, and I was saying that Chris Jones might not be as important as uh, Patrick Mahomes, but is in the realm of for that team being hugely important. And you can argue, I think, after the last two years, more important than Tyreek Hill was. No the, doubt, yes. To, to the Chiefs, just in terms of what the results ended up being, not necessarily the the offense, but the Chiefs are now being depleted by dollars, and Chris Jones is not somewhere that they're willing to save money, but LeJarrius Sneed is. That I've heard all offseason that he is available. Some people, in talking about the Dolphins, have created the scenario where you trade Jalen Waddell for Sneed because uh, you're losing Xavier Howard and you want something opposite Jalen Ramsey that is, uh, you know, overwhelming. Uh but the finances of the sport make it so nobody in Kansas City is confused about why Legereus Need is available. He's available because they had to pay their quarterback and they've got to pay Chris Jones and they've got to pay all sorts of people. They have to prioritize. And, and, yes. but, and they've got a very young defense. The defense that just won them the championship, I'm tying it to the Bills, that Bills offense is exceptional. I don't know if Stephon Diggs has aged out at 30, but he didn't look very good at the end of last year. People were talking all of last year about how he's not happy there. Everything with Josh Allen changed with Buffalo when Stephon Diggs got there. And now, at 30 years old, he's the oldest member of an offense, an offense that is very good. And the Chiefs' defense is also one of the youngest defenses to ever win a championship. Yes. And now they're going to start losing some of those pieces. Is that offense very good or is Josh Allen very good? It's a good question. Because we talk all the time about how he doesn't have many pieces beyond Stephon Diggs. Right. But isn't it the same thing? Once I make your quarterback good, haven't I made your offense good? Does it even matter? Ask the USC Trojans football team last Well, their season. offense was good. Caleb they're Williams was good. But no, I, but if you I, have a good quarterback, do you have a good if offense? If we think your quarterback is good, generally the offense is good. In fact, that's one of the things that makes it for Russell Wilson is available now. Because, right. wait a minute, Denver was constipated all season. I'm used to Russell Wilson. At the end of the games, he's in the games, and he's driving up and down the field. It's not this four yards at a time crap, and he can't get out of the pocket. As soon as, Ru as, soon as Denver's offense became bad, we think Russell Wilson's no longer a good quarterback. Like, that's how that one happened. Especially because we thought – 
at the very least, that the Broncos had great weapons as he was going there. You saw guys like Cortland, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. We thought it was a good Everybody's fit. eyes right. were wide open. Yes. I think there's a difference, though, between your quarterback is good and your offense is good. Yeah. Like I think an argument just in the AFC East can be made where people will say the Dolphins' offense is good and there's still questions as to is Tua good. That's fair. But I don't think there are any questions. If our audience is in consensus agreement, a quarterback is good, that we're then going to say that offense isn't. Because there would be no evidence of the quarterback being good if the <laughs> offense is it. But, but you can have quarterbacks quarterback that have bad, bad offense. offenses that you still say are good. Like, are the Jaguars good? Is their offense good? Because people will still say that Trevor Lawrence is a oh, good I think quarterback. Are I don't know. If I think people good. are questioning Trevor Lawrence is good well, because Billy has been because the. I feel offense... like your offense is good if your quarterback can have an average game, but you can still win with your offense. I think that's like the differentiation. Like, I think good offenses. All right, so I guess good quarterbacks do just make enough. an offense look better <laughs> oftentimes. Right. And sometimes when you rely on one player to win you a game and they aren't able to do that for okay. whatever reason. How about the Chargers? It exposes you. Good offense, though, Billy. Mm. No? Their defense was terrible. They lost last year because of their defense. I know you questioned Justin Herbert. I'm not talking about winning and losing here. I Look, I think you guys might be able to hit me with a couple of outliers on this, but I don't think you're going to be able to consistently do it. If I ask you any quarterback's name and I say, is that a good quarterback, and you say yes, you're then going to give me a good Ooh, let's offense. Let's play this game. We have five minutes That's left. That's fair. You're going to give me a good offense on any – Good game. Because, uh, Billy, are you questioning whether the Chargers' offense was good? Like, I'm, I'm saying statistics. Statistically, you can have some questions about what the Chargers were, but they've been playoff relevant because their offense is good. And I thought the failure of that team last year is they had one of the worst defenses in the league. I think you can have a good quarterback that masks an offense and you assume it's a good offense because of how good the quarterback is. But that doesn't mean they're a good offense. Can I ask you about the San Francisco 49ers and Brock Purdy, okay, sir? No, but you know, you're doing it the other way. You know you're, that's a good offense, it's and good you're game. still questioning the quarterback. That's not what I'm doing. So you're saying if I'm it's saying I know good the quarterback, quarterback, the offense is, good. is automatically good. This is I'm, sort of like how, how a rhombus isn't a square, but a square is a rhombus. It's nothing it's like actually, that. Yeah. It's not like Nerd. that. How about the Lions, Jared Goff? Both are good. Mm. Oh. Do we know if Goff is good? <laughs> Again, you so guys, you're looking for you the guys, definite wait, good quarterback. Wait, you guys need to stop playing this game differently yeah. than I. This am. is fun. It's a little it, twisty. You're not having no, fun. It yeah. is not. There's nothing <laughs> twisty about what I'm doing. It's like when something comes out with a hint of lime. That's what we're doing. Okay. You this is why. Same so product, CJ Stroud is good. Yeah, is he's the good. Texans' offense good? Yes. I don't. Know. Good question. Huh. Yes. Let's cut to the chase. But is it because of CJ Stroud, or we don't know? The Texans' offense is good. Stugatz continues to play a different game. This is the theme for today. It's how L. Ron Hubbard made an appearance out of nowhere. Play a different game than the one Dan is playing. <laughs> when I say, if the quarterback is good, then the offense is good, and then you come back with, Jared Goff, I'm not sure he's good. Right. You're playing a different game than I, I am. A little twist to your game How about the Ravens? I've acknowledged that. <laughs> Their quarterback is good and yeah. their offense is good. Does their offensive good. coordinator yeah. count as their yeah. offense? That's uh, part of the equation. Offense is good in the, uh, in the regular the fourth scoring in offense of the league. All right, I'm going to do it another Not way. They had 10 the points against the exactly Chiefs. Exactly right. Do you blame the offensive -time coordinator or the offense, though? Because if he's part of the offense, then yeah, I would say offense, some weaknesses there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it another way. Because a I third way. I told you guys, Another yes, twist. like uh, the number of Michael Jordan endings that there were, three of them, <laughs> even though there was only one. Now you get it. There's more yeah. than one ending. Now I get it, yeah. yes. I will never get you, Billy. <laughs> I will go the rest of my life without getting. I've accepted that. Yeah. <laughs> so have I. That's, that, what you hear in my voice is defeat. Wow. The question oh. I will now hmm. place in front of all of you is not even multiple outliers. Give me one, one quarterback right now playing that is good that I can say his offense isn't. The Chiefs. Bingo. Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> That's a good one. Check me. I mean. Do we know Patrick Mahomes is good, though? Oh, yes. Do we know he's a but villain? Do we know if he's a villain? That's he's up for so debate. Not that is a such weird a weird villain. take. Yeah. Why would Patrick Mahomes be? I know people hate when someone becomes good enough to win, but I don't think he's a villain. That's why he thought Derek Jeter was a villain, because he was winning all the time. And so there's oh. people that didn't like him. But, but also he was on the Yankees. That's, I think automatic well, the Yankees villain, are the villain status if you're on the Yankees. The Chiefs wanted to be viewed as villains this past Super Bowl. 
like when we were at like media night and all that stuff, like they, they were trying that, to yes. ham it up and like, right. well, they embraced something that they gave themselves. They were trying to make themselves the villains, I think. And like overcoming adversity. Oh, please. That whole yeah. storyline. Like every team creates that narrative in their head, I think. Just back to Snead for a second. There is a scenario where the Chiefs can keep him. They have tagged him. Uh, they don't want to go in without him having a contract into this season. They would have to clear like $76 million in cap space, which according to Adam Schefter, he's saying that they can do that fairly easily if they want to commit him to a long-term deal. So, But all of those decisions, you have to make cuts that hurt all over the place. And that team Correct. has yes. uh, it has been diluted, but is still good enough to win the championship. I want to... I want to circle back around on what Jeremy is saying, though, because I know the Yankees have a historic um, villainy about them. You're not talking about the square rhombus thing? No, I uh, would like to never talk about that again. Can uh, we talk about Jeremy throwing up before he's saying the national anthem at the Heat game? I did. he was nervous. No, I thought I was nervous, but I actually had a fever. I was a little baby. <laughs> little baby Jeremy puking all over. It was little, disgusting. Little baby like Jeremy AAA. thinking Michael Jordan stinks as a basketball player. Yep. It's, it's terrible. I feel it's bad the for only you. information that he had. <laughs> Saw Shaq and Kobe. They were great. You're bringing in ancestral villainy to the Yankees. I don't believe they're actually villainous anymore. Like that, uh, you're well, that's because no one cares about baseball. You're grandfathering it sure. in, though. No, and because they haven't been that good, and they don't have players you dislike. You need you need to have some hateable things. Why are you still waving around that lifetime <laughs> shit statue, Jessica? You just wanted like, to hold like, it. Have you it's never cute. won a trophy before? Like, like you're obsessed with this. Oh my it. god, but it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Willow's totally gonna eat this. <laughs>